What we're doing today is hands-only CPR. Um, what we found is a lot of people are hesitant to do regular CPR, compressions and ventilations. I'm taking away the refresher course of everything has just changed from when I learned how to do this 25 years ago. It, it, seems, it seems easier, less complicated, and it was a five minutes of how to save somebody's life, and you just never know when you're going to need that. For somebody who can't be here today to learn this great tool in the park, what, is, what do they need to do? So what we'll do is demonstrate for you how to do compression-only CPR. Um, what we're going to do first off is if you found someone that went unresponsive in front of you, say you saw someone go down, they clench their chest, they fall to the ground, we're going to want to establish unresponsiveness, okay? So that's the first step. We're going to walk up to the person, we're going to shake and shout, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up. If they don't wake up, you call 911. That way that gets us coming and uh, the person's gonna be, have a better chance of survival if we can get that shock on early. If someone is unresponsive, they're blue, they're not, they're not uh, responding to you, they're flaccid, meaning their muscles are completely uh, weak, they don't have any muscle tone to them, there's a good chance that they're in cardiac arrest and it's better to get uh, CPR on early. So once we've established those things, uh, we're gonna wanna pull the shirt up on the patient so we can identify the nipple line, um, whether it's a male or a female. Um, you're gonna wanna take the heel of your hand uh, your dominant hand, whether it be your right or your left, you're going to place it in between the nipple line and you're going to lock your elbow out, you're going to interlock your fingers. And a lot of people when they first start doing CPR, you'll notice that they have soft elbows and they push down like this and they don't get a good compression. So what we're going to want to do is lock the elbows out and we're going to want to come over the top of the patient. This allows our body weight to do most of the work and not our arms. So we're going to get less tired, we'll be more efficient doing the compressions. Um, when you do the compressions, you want to do at least 100 a minute, and you want to do them fast and hard. It's basically a good rhythm to do the compressions to. So if you're saying, you're singing, staying alive, staying alive, those compressions, and that, that beat, that'll be the correct beat to do the compressions to. So, so I'll demonstrate it for you right now. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Keep doing this. You're not going to stop until we get there. That or the patient kicks you off their chest. So you're going to keep doing CPR, once we get there, we'll take over for you. Um, this has been shown to be an, a great help. Um, since this, these programs have been out in varying cities throughout the United States, and we've seen a big increase in save rates.